Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. I seem to be into rotating pens being held up by craps. Trying to add a little bit of variety into this journey that we're all going on. Uh, trying to add, hopefully, maybe a little bit of a levity into our situation, which I think could use as much levity as possible. So you see twirling in front of you a pen that I saw on Etsy. And when I saw it, I said, looks really good. <clears throat> My fellow beekeeper will be very happy with this pen. They've already expressed an interest in it. So we're going to dive into this pen. Take a look at how it's made, how it writes. Um, does it feel good in the hand? Is it put together well? Obviously, the color is a winner. So we're going to wait for Mr. Frog to come around and give you all a wink. And then we'll dive in to the details. Did you catch the wink? The pen was delivered in this uh, generic packaging. Nothing on it. But it's a functional package. Slide off the plastic cover. We have the condom. I'm not going to do ASRM. And the pen is revealed. So, from a giftable item, and this pen comes in many colors, it's certainly something that you could do. Here's the original posting on Etsy. This pen comes in a number of colors. Here's those colors. It's a nice looking pen. So what pens to compare it to? Well, obviously, to me, it's a smog pen in yellow. So are those ribbons yellow ribbons? I'd have to say yes. Here's dark paint, which is a dark ribbon. And here's the closest pen that I would say resembles this yellow pen is this Menlo from Edison Pens. So as you can see, the ribbon is white and black. And with the ink in it, you can see that white show up quite a bit. There's no white that you see at all in this pen. So it makes me think that the ribbon is yellow. The resin seems to be the same density of yellow as the Edison Menlo is. The Menlo has been a great pen. It's been in daily use since the day I got it, which was a number of years ago. Uh, sadly, the vac filler has uh, stopped working, so I just fill it as an eyedropper. Yes, I could send it back to Edison to get it repaired with their lifetime warranty, but nah, I'll keep working at it. And maybe sometime when I get to a pen show that Brian Gray is at, I'll show it to him and see what he thinks. Here we are with the pen disassembled as much as I'm going to disassemble it. I pulled the nib and feed out. It looks like it has a nib assembly which should unscrew. There's the threads. It has a flat section in it so the feed is only going to go in one way and it keeps things in orientation. Originally I looked at the converter and I said, ah, looks like a pen BBS converter, but unfortunately that opening is just slightly smaller than a pen BBS opening. I'm not going to go through my converters to see what else might fit. This resin is, is impressive. I can say no more about it. It's just nice. Something unique, something different. Something to appeal to the eye and the mind. The number five nib is pretty generic. You know, the classic iridium point. It's a fine, and it is certainly a fine. 
and we'll see how it lays down ink. I have low expectations and the feed is your basic plastic feed. So we're going to reassemble. Everything's going to be flushed and cleaned. Finding an ink for this is going to be a challenge, but I like challenges. So an ink to put in the yellow pen. Well, this is an ink I've had for a while. Bought it at the uh, DC Pen Show probably three years ago. And that's what it is. I actually tested out a bunch of inks and selected this one after using it in that great ink test table that they had. Yes, it's that classic bottle. And needless to say, I wasn't impressed. I mean, it's okay, but, you know, I don't go gaga over the bottle with that ball in it. And, you know, you fill up that part at the top. You know, it's a nice design, but, you know, a nice ink bottle with a nice indent in the bottom that has a big wide opening, et cetera, et cetera, to me is just as effective. We're going to look at the color card and the chromatography. The color card shows basically, uh, <clears throat> I would call it a red-brown. Uh, you may catch a little bit of shimmer there in that blob I laid down. Hard for me to see, but maybe on the edges. The chromatography shows a pretty consistent color. You know, that's a little residue from an earlier test there, which didn't impact this test. It's a pretty clean color, almost like a pink, going into an orange, going into a brown. And then at the very edge, there's a little bit of green, which is what I think I see here in this spot. So let's see how it works in the pen. So now we're ready to write. And I did not eyedropper this pen. I used the converter. I just don't want to fill that all up with ink. The cap comes off. Um, almost two and a half turns, so quite a bit of turns for this design. Is that number five nib? Kind of reminiscent of the Jinhao 992, 991, and that whole series. Yeah, the resin does look good. It's about as small a pen as, as I would be comfortable writing with. It's extremely light, will give you those weights. And as you would expect from this design, it posts very deeply, very securely, and this is certainly a pen for those who love to post because it really doesn't change the balance. In fact, I think it feels better with the cap because the pen could use a little weight. That section is on the small side for what I enjoy writing with. We'll give you those dimensions. So let's see how that uh, Gordo Road ink works in this nib on this Fabriano paper. As you probably heard, this nib is fairly smooth, but you you do feel the paper, so you get some uh, some decent feedback, which I'm okay with. I like that. It's on the dry side. I think this ink is a little bit on the dry side. I don't have enough experience to say for certain, but from this uh, <coughs> writing here, that's what my feeling is. Um, for somebody who likes a fine nib that doesn't lay down a lot of ink, so it'll work on, on many different types of paper, then this nib would be fine for you. It certainly uh, is not the nib uh, uh, sweet spot that I enjoy, but then I have a very particular 
case, but I could certainly get used to this nib. And this easily could be an everyday carry. And yes, I have unposted it so the cap isn't hitting the tripod as it was when I was writing up here. So let's rate this pen. And that's not an easy thing for me to do. I'm going to give it an 8.4. And it basically gets one check for the resin and the look. So let's go to the details. So design just gets one check. Engineering gets one check. Build gets one check. I'm going to give writing two checks. I'm trying to be objective about that. The look, we're going to give it three checks. And the value is one check. That's how we got to our 8.4. So this pen is priced north of $20 US. And I think that's at the high end of this pen, considering you can get a much better built pen and ergonomically to me a better pen with a number six nib for well under twenty dollars pen bbs has many of them you know the 308 the 352 the 480s etc so from that viewpoint i i can't totally recommend this pen but i present it to you to see if you like it and the one thing i noticed is i reviewed the footage that i shot that does look like white ribbons in there that are just yellow. So you can see some white at the very edge of those ribbons. So that's one of the things that the camera sees better than my eyes see looking at the viewfinder. So we've reached the uh, end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed a look at a pen that comes in many colors. And if it's certainly a pen that appeals to you, um, then it might be something you want to take a look at. The seller of this on, on Etsy is also on Amazon, but they don't sell any pens on Amazon. Here's their Amazon store. And they were, you know, the first time I've dealt with this seller from China, and they were uh, very communicatable, got a lot of uh, uh, messages from them on Etsy. And uh, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the second pen that I bought, which shows a red Fuluin 017. Uh, but they're still trying to procure it, so hopefully um, someday that'll show up and I can show all my full and one sevens together. So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you're staying safe and your family's staying safe and you're social distancing and you're doing all the things that you need to do and hopefully years later if someone comes across this video and hears me talking about that, they'll go, what was that all about? But unfortunately, I don't think that'll be the case. I think that they'll be well aware of the impacts of, of the current pandemic that we're in the midst of. And it's long from peaking, and that's the other unfortunate thing. But find a pen that you love. Find a pen that you enjoy writing with. Certainly, there's many people out there who'd love to get a letter from you. So sit down and write. And you don't have to be the greatest author in the world. You just have to share your thoughts and feelings and experiences with with other people and let them read about them and i'm certain that'll be a nice emotionally therapeutic exercise so we've reached the end of this video and we're going to say bye for now until the next video stay safe stay happy stay healthy enjoy life as best you can Thanks, not bad. <laughs>